Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot. Come at you with the Wii Comic Run Up. We've covered this week from Marvel Looks. Now it's time to move on to, well, other publishers. Starting off with Noctera, number 13, from Image Comics. And yes, actually coming out about a month after Noctera, number 12. Where we left off, um, <clears throat> Sundog Convoy and Val had been reunited. And on their way to Eos, however, they were reunited with another familiar, familiar face, Blacktop Bill. And, uh, um, Emery was, uh, thinking back on, uh, when he learned that his parents had not, were, at, were still alive before the big PM. So, um, Bill explains that, uh, in his own way, he always kind of felt like he was just kind of trading water in life, and that, there, that the world could be so much more, and, well, apparently Knox agreed and, uh, made him more. Um, but he's offering the rest of Sundog Convoy a job. And to, you know, join him and Knox. They don't... They're not really down with it. And, uh, they fire their, uh... Their light guns at him, which, uh... Take out a chunk of, uh, Bill's head. But it otherwise has no uh, effect on him whatsoever. So, whenever he was a kid, he learned about his, uh, his biological parents still being alive, looked up where they, where they lived, and, um, realized it wasn't, it was fairly close, and we learned that he got up to, uh, the flashback portion kind of cuts off with him getting to his parents' door, and not his biological parent, the door of his biological parents' and house, and knocking. But um, Convoy makes it to Eos, and it is it's swarming with shades. But uh, Val says, "What's happened with her?" Having gone through the unit, what was initially done to uh, Blacktop Bill, not not the whole thing with Knox, but she can get through so long as she's not bleeding. But she finds an indentation and uh, starts digging, but she cuts her hand, which which causes the shades to come after her. Some dog convoy attacks the shades, and there appears to be a trap door, which. They fall. They all fall into. And those in Eos appear to be giant light beings, and welcome them, and welcome Sundog Convoy. And that is where the issue ends. Gotta say, this book is uh, definitely a good one. Worth the read. You, Scott Snyder uh, tells a really can tell a really good uh, horror tale. Moving on though to our next book, we've got Wildcats number six. Where we left off. Grifter was, uh, it was confirmed that the body buried in Cole's grave was, or, was that of Cole Cash. Though not Cole Cash from Earth Zero. And Super Ray had a run-up with seven soldiers, which led to a fight between him and, uh, um, Spartan. So, the issue opens up the Halo Pro-Am tournament. 
Marlowe's on, on the links. And knocks the ball into uh, water. When a uh, reporter asks uh, about the seven soldiers in action during the coup in uh, Vilnia. Pointing out some other facts, such as the fact that um, Halo was already doing business with the, uh, fat, the fascistic government that's taken over. The reporter is revealed to be none other than Clark Kent of the Daily Planet. But, uh, Halliday tell uh, when, uh, Marlowe kind of blows off, uh, Kent's question, uh, Halliday drives off so Marlowe can get his ball, and, uh, Halliday informs Marlowe that the Void is pleased. At the Pleasure Palace, um, Maxine is enjoying uh, watching the Beef, the beef Boys uh, call out someone paying with a knock on the door. It's Cole, alive and well. Across town, um, Zana and Fairchild are waiting on the rest of the team to show up. The rest of the team, in this case, now be consisting of Backlash, Pike, and Warblade. Pike being in, in command. Um, Fairchild uh, powers up. They're attacked in the Halo building. Cole's broken in, attempting to get uh, the death blow information. Knocks out uh, Spartan, or fights Spartan, and uh, also the team now being coordinated by Mother One are dealing with. Uh, would appear to be uh, Spartans without skin. Um, Zana asks uh, what their mission is. Mother One refuses to uh, elaborate. But it turns out that the uh, mission is, is assassinating Toy Man. Zana and Fairchild opt to uh, protect Toy Man. Things get tense between with uh, between the two of them, and as well as uh, Warblade and Pike. Backlash tries to calm things down, but uh, Pike explains that it's the it's them or Zealot. Pike get the the, uh, the new the new that they're acting to him by the sudden appearance of Spartan uh, saving Zana and Fairchild and uh, elsewhere Clark Kent's having a burger when Batman comes calling explaining he's looking into uh, he's looking into Halo and that Clark should probably leave the whole Halo situation alone. At the Beef Boys townhouse, uh, Maxine is visited by the Void, briefly. When uh, Spartan 
now with the uh, death blow now being run by by death blow shows up with uh, Fairchild and Zana though Cole is elsewhere still at the Halo building in fact where he goes to talk with the Void leads to avoid removing her, her helmet and then Cole shooting her causing her to explode inside the Halo building that is where the issue ends and Cole, Cole shot uh, the void because after accusing her of reshaping the world of going with Halo's mission of reshaping the world so that she can control it. So, moving on though to our next book, we've got Deceased War of the Undead Gods, number eight. Wrapping up the miniseries. Where we left off, um, the anti life equation had been stalled for the moment. Um, and, uh, Cyborg had had become a combination of himself and Brainiac. Even Darkseid was cured of uh, the anti-life of anti-life. So we are reunions. Barbara and Mr. Miracle are reunited with their son. Supergirl is reunited with her parents and meets her cousin and her cousin's son. There are funerals. Even the Black Racer, the embodiment of death, shows up. Batman sneaks up on, actually manages to sneak up on uh, Black Racer and, and explains that he has a plan to take on Erebos and he wants to know if it would work. Um, Batman goes to talk with Cyborg about his plan and they then call everyone together explain parts of the plan which includes uh, though during all this Guy Gardner says to poke fun at Darkseid leading to him being zapped with the Omega Beams and well Guy's self-aware enough to realize that um a level of stupid heat that it has a level of stupid that's beyond him even. Wonder Woman uh, goads Ares into uh, take distracting the god of death. Batman talks Wonder Woman into staying behind to lead the other the others, train the train the Kryptonians, so on and so forth. John brings him brings Damien a birthday present. It's his 18th birthday after all. The birthday present is a white bat suit. The idea being that the personification of darkness could come up against the light knight. But um, inside War World. Everything is set up. Heartbeats will be everyone's heartbeats will be stopped as uh, um, War World passes through a doom tube. And soon, Ares and uh, the Black Racer are face to face with Erebos. Everyone comes to. Ollie uses the uh, bow and quiver of Apollo to put, make the crack in uh, in War World or in uh, 
to begin doing damage to Erebos. Lobo dr cut, drags a large enough hole, crack in Erebos with his uh, bike and his hook for Warworld to get in. However, there's one other thing. The weapon has been removed from uh, Cyborg's memory, as well as his conversation with Damien. Turns out the weapon was the was the life equation, life and anti-life colliding. Damien explains his plan to uh, to everyone. And before they, before the combatants leave through a boom tube, the Spectre takes takes John Kent to be with his best friend in his last in his last moments. And of course, the Spectre gets him out of there as Erebos is destroyed. The heroes return triumphant, but well, still number one less. And Alfred, the Spectre, explains that sometimes he visits the cosmos that Damien made. Gliding by his new sons, walk over its cooling planets, and as he does so, a constellation, a, a group of, not a constellation, but combination of, of stars in the right of constellation and cosmic gases create a bat symbol. And that is where the series ends. I do believe this is it for the DC saga. And I gotta say, um, yeah, this was, uh, this was something. <laughs> Quite the quite the ride. I know there's there was a um, an online only comic that came out um, between um, in between some of them, which sadly I never I haven't had the chance to read, but I'll have to get the uh, collected edition on that some at some point. Moving on though to our last book for the moment, we've got Danger Street number five, where we left off. Warlord and Starman were attempting to resurrect uh, the young boy who had been inadvertently killed. However, a complication arose. Orion coming for the for the body of the dead boy. Manhunter is going after Mark Shaw. The Manhunter is going after uh, members of Green Team. While uh, the creeper, or while while uh, Jack Ryder, the creeper, as in his civilian identity, Jack Ryder, is warning uh, viewers of uh, the threat posed by the outsiders. Um, so, Warlord, Warlord of Starman argue with uh, Ryan before Starman just attacks him. There's a... Uh, it, there's basically a, a tremor from the from them attacking one another that uh, is felt at the police station where Lady Cop is uh, going... is, you know, doing paperwork. Surviving dingbats look over at the... see an explosion at the cemetery Well, they and well, they're off to go uh, avenge their, their dead friend. Elsewhere, Cecil, member of Green Team, is uh, talking with an actress in his in his trailer, or in her trailer. I'm not sure if it, whose trailer it is. There's a knock at the door. And he 
finally answers it. His security's all dead. It's the hands of Manhunter. He pleads for his life, and but Manhunter's not able to pull the trigger. Cecil uh, taunts him, taunts Manhunter as he leaves. Well, the leader of that green team is uh, dedicating a, a naval vessel when his own bodyguard faints. The fight between uh, Starman and Orion continues while Warlord exhumes uh, Good Luck's body. Um, <clears throat> Lady Cop's going to investigate, saying that she'll uh, call back if, uh, depending on what it is, if, if it's unless it's the dingbats that doing something stupid, in which case she won't, so that uh, she has time to you know hide evidence of her murdering them. Jack Ryder gets a message from Batman telling him to go to the rooftop. Um, Batman tries to get Ryder to back off of, to stop the Outsiders stuff. There are no Outsiders after all. But uh, Ryder basically tells Batman where he can stick it. Um... As Orion and Starman fight, Warlord loads uh, the coffin with Good Luck's body into, his, into their car and drives off. The Dingbats have a gun went for the purpose of killing Starman and uh, nearly run in and nearly run into Warlord as he's leaving, sending a text to uh, Starman to tell him where to go once he's done with Orion. Leader of Green Team. Uh, talks with his bodyguard and says, well, you know, bodyguard says it's hard to, to uh, protect the three surviving members of the green team. So it suggests that maybe just focus on one. As, uh, after almost, uh, getting hit by the dingbats, uh, Ward plows into, uh, Lady Cop's car and Good Looks' coffin is thrown, thrown from the car, bouncing a few times and uh, before cracking open. The Dingbats arrive at the cemetery and find Starman triumphant just before he tell, he asked him to tell Warlord that he won, just before passing out. And the issue ends with the manor reappearing to Cecil. This time, however, he's able to act, he's able to finish the job as the magic protecting him is no longer protect doing so. Jack Ryder gives a monologue about how people should be asking if the he asking if you know with with the heroes who claim to be the most powerful beings in the universe on, on Earth, do they feel safe? Warlord's currently unconscious under hitting Lady Cop's car. Lady Cop's car's looking banged up. Starman and Orion are, are unconscious when Starman collapsed on top of Orion. Uh, the Dingbats are about to get their revenge on uh, Starman. Cecil's dead. And things appear to be taking a turn, and that is... And things and will be continued next month. I'm really enjoying this series. It's weird, but you have faith in Tom Kane. He's written some weird. He he's done some. Uh, there's some, been some weird books he's written, and uh, it, you know you kind of it, go in knowing these, this is going to be weird. So yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.